Hello, Pascal. So nice to see you. How are you? Happy birthday and joyeux anniversaire. It's so, so great to talk about uh, music, piano, lots of things. It's a beautiful birthday gift. Thank you. I think my life is better than ever. And uh, I'm not complaining, even uh, in spite of the difficult period we are through, I, I don't know, I enjoy life. I mean, it's beautiful. Uh, I have my piano and my music uh, and my friends and uh, no, I mean, it, it's, it's great. Yeah, I think music keeps you spirit young. And once the spirit is young, the body follows. I remember one, one sentence by Francis Poulenc, who was asked about you know, the great composers, uh, what he felt about Mozart, Schumann, Beethoven. And he said, oh, those composers are gods, you know. But Debussy, Forêt, Chabrier, they're my friends. And I find it easier to cope with friends than with gods. <laughs> and that's the reason why you are so known in the world for your kind of concentration on French composer. Is it true? Absolutely. But it's also a matter of language. I mean, you can be gifted and speak 24 different languages, but you will still have a mother tongue. And my mother tongue is French music. So, uh, I mean, it sounds very pretentious, but I would say whatever I do with Debussy or Ravel or Satie, I know it's, it's right. I cannot say that about Schubert. <laughs> Somebody called me once an ambassador of French music, yeah. and uh, I was very proud of that because it means, yeah, I want to make people discover music. I was, I remember in the 80s when I started teaching, no one would bring Poulenc to me, mm -hmm. absolutely never. Now, almost every master class I have some Poulenc. I don't think that you can play everything. Mm -hmm. Truly, of course, technically, everybody can play everything. But there is, I always say to my students, there is a point, not now, you're too young, but you will find your language. You will find your, what is you. Don't believe that you are universal. Wow. You have to find what, see, Kachen, my teacher again told me, at the moment, play everything. Mm -hmm. Because you have the age, I was 16, to learn, you have to learn, you have to play, you have to try. But later, you will find. And uh, it's not only playing, you know, it's not at the piano. I remember my teacher said to me, get away from the piano. You have too much technique. Breathe, walk, go to museums, read. I mean, feed yourself with knowledge and culture, and that will help your playing. I've had that question so many times from my students and saying, what do I do to make uh, a career? What did you do to start such an amazing career? And I always say that I have a career because of the cleaning lady of my parents, because she was the one to introduce me to Julius Kachen. Um, Kachen gave me my first recording, my first recital in London, first recital in Paris and so on. I, I won two competitions. Mm -hmm. I say that it didn't change anything. I didn't get a single concert out of that. <laughs> I don't want to discourage people with competition. They have to go through that thing, but don't trust them. Do it for your own benefits, for your experience, for playing on stage and being with other colleagues. But don't expect that a first prize will bring you a career. So you don't have a problem uh, if a German publisher, a scholarly publisher like Handley is doing the core French repertory in Urtex edition? You have such a, a knowledge and, a, and a, rep a reputation about being uh, faithful to the to the manuscript and the text. Whoever, I mean, whatever is Russian, French, German, Italian, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's the it's the approach, and uh, we need that. I mean, I mean, there. I was told by my teachers, of course, many many mistakes that Debussy and Ravel mention, and in the French edition, they are still there today. But you were right mentioning that there is a kind of preconceived ideas of buying a German edition for French music, because we always think that, well, the German edition should be for German music and French edition is that. Well. But now I can see that in the master classes now and more and more, I mean, they, they, they have realized I mean, that they, they have to go to the more text edition in order to be faithful to the, to the music. I counted the number of Urtext editions you 
spent your f personal fingering, it's 18 volumes already, Pascal. Really? Wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> As you know, fingering is always a controversial thing. Sometimes yeah. when I ask even famous pianists, they would refuse and say, hands of the people are so different, it's impossible. But many others, of course, like you, they do this because they have an idea how to finger this piano music. Is it your personal fingering you do on stage? For instance, I love so much your Ravel piano trio fingering. Well, I remember there was a phrase of my teacher, Lisette Descaves, who told me fingerings are like shoes. They don't fit anyone. But she said, but there are some rules that you should always have in mind. For instance, position of your hands, avoid turns, mm -hmm. and when you have a choice, every finger has its own talent, so choose him carefully. So that's when comes the science of fingering. And what I do for, for Henle, it's half and half. It's half my own fingerings. Mm -hmm. But I know the limits when I do something that is totally personal. So I, I am always kind of balancing my own ideas and my own beliefs in fingerings, but also being sure that I don't go over the top by doing something too personal that might disturb uh, another pianist. So thinking about fingering is so important. So oh. That's why I'm very proud to be in collaboration with you because I believe that as I'm not directive with my fingerings, but I suggest things that I believe can help. Because there were some rules. I, re I always mentioned the fact that at the time of Marguerite Long, she would say that there is, it's forbidden to put thumbs on black keys. Oh, yes, famous. Uh, you've heard that before. I mean, what is that? I mean, why is there is a... Uh, so that's kind of thing I, I go against that. I, I don't want to give a rule. I just want to, to give a help and a suggestion. At the moment, my, my last... Live concert was uh, last February. And the uh, next one, hopefully, would be in Madrid in May. Uh, that, uh, it's still under question mark, of course. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, ever, not once in my professional life, I've ever been one year without playing concert. It must be a nightmare for someone like you. Not really. Because I realized that uh, the presence of my piano, the playing itself, is in fact the most important thing. Uh, I have a few uh, recording projects. I did a lot of online teaching. I'm still... Uh, uh, yeah, because I, I teach regularly in, in London, uh, the Trinity College and uh, Royal Academy. So those things are still happening on, online. And it's okay. I mean, okay, the... the there's a bit of sound problem, but still you can help them. Mm -hmm. And it's a good thing for the teacher because you have to think, you, how can I help in spite of the fact that I'm not there? And it, that, it works. I, I cannot say I'm very happy about the situation, but uh, I think you have to adapt. There's nothing we can do about it. So what am I going to do in my life to be satisfied, happy, positive, and do what what I can do instead of complaining. So I decided to re, uh, refurnish my house. Of course, I, I cannot play 10 hours of piano every day. So I decided, okay, there are a lot of work to do. It's my mother's house. It's also, so I, I did everything by myself. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> no, I was very fortunate. So that's why I'm uh, being 70 today. Um, I, I have nothing to complain about.